cast again with oh, hi. a slightly larger cast than last time this week um, because it's not weekly anymore, is it? Um, more into that later. So this week we have Kata. Hello. Oh, we have hi. a very sleepy com. We have Rabbit. <laughs> We have me, yeah. we have Link, and we have Pecan, who's also quite tired, and we have Shiro, who's sick. But welcome! Welcome, Shiro! Welcome, welcome. Thank you. She is the cutest voice actor that we have on the team. Just oh, objectively. <laughs> is I like it... I'm adorable, but I'm not a voice actor. Yeah, I was about to say, there's probably not a voice actor. Yeah. <laughs> what they say. But, yeah, welcome. I hope you enjoy your stay on the podcast, Shiro. Um, yeah, okay. Good. <laughs> Bless your heart. <laughs> well, anyway, it is time to move on to the news. Um, everyone's a little bit sleepy, I do apologise for that. So, this week, again, not too much on team-wise, Um um, as I'm sure you all know, because everyone's around the same age here, um, it is back to school, back to uni, back to college, back to this, back to that. So everything's kind of just slowly starting up again after everyone gets prepared from travelling halfway across countries um, to go to new schools and things. So yeah, um, bear with us, but things are happening and we are definitely haven't got a lot of fun this week, so don't worry about it. Um, things that you can see this week in Team News. Um, Link, our wonderful social media manager, who is way wonderful. too quiet on the balance. That's great. Um, <laughs> it's okay. I've turned you up now. Um, so Link has been starting posting these lovely team rate my setup things, which I think is a brilliant idea. So you get to see some of the team workstations. You can rate them if you want to, or just like see how people work and how some people are neat and some people are not neat. I mean, we've it, we've been enjoying looking at them in team chat, so I'm not sure how often you're going to post those, Link. I'm hoping to do them, like, around once a week. We'll see. It depends on how many people send them. You can see how people don't work. <laughs> well, you can look out for those on social media. So they've been on the Twitter. I haven't seen them anywhere else because I only check the Twitter, but, um, whoops. Please follow us, we only have 42 followers. <laughs> yeah, if you haven't already followed the Twitter, the thing is on the thing. Wait, that's not a very good description. Yes, clearly. <laughs> the, the username mm. is on the Twitch stream, it's in the description of the Twitch stream, it's in the description of the YouTube, you can probably find it on the Discord somewhere, in links and resources. Yeah, they're yeah. on drawn. So... Please follow us on Twitter if you haven't already and get the extra content that Link works so hard to produce and even find a few memes. Works hard on Worked hard clothes. <laughs> hmm. You put in more Control effort than, than you could 3D. do. I mean, okay, even posting something is effort and we are proud to have a media manager now, so it's nice and thank you. Um, the other thing that's been happening this week that we also have a team member on that can talk about, though I haven't prepped them for it, um, is Casa has started a comic. Oh, uh, <laughs> well, I haven't started it. I've not even. It's still in the planning stage. But just, it's nice to see other projects kind of taking shape around the server. So, if you are interested in another comic, a bit like the one Uwe has been making, based around some team members and some inside jokes then it's good to follow that yeah, and I'm stealing I'm stealing Owo's idea but putting the city in a cafe <laughs> and a little sprinkle of cat girls and talking of Owo's yeah. comic I believe some new pages have been made recently so I would check the Tumblr regularly because it is definitely a fun thing to watch grow so as far as I know that's all for team news this week does anybody else have anything Tom's in-game username has been changed to Corniando. <laughs> <laughs> because of one mistype from one person? I don't think that was I mean, I, I believe I am still no, named... I, 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 I am still known as the Ert-chan. 
um, the voice actor <laughs> because of one typo. Oh, and we still do have the jumping lake thing, so you know. Yes. Welcome to Earth. No, welcome to Earth. Oh, I just realised I've been on the <laughs> wrong slide this entire time. Whoops. Yeah, welcome to us, child. It's fine. Um, oh, we can talk about that later. Whoops. Anyway, it's fine. We're professional. Yeah, totally. It, it was okay. Yes. So the, like, usually it's just a slideshow of places on Earth. That was just a slideshow of somewhere on Earth. It's fine. That was totally planned. Anyway, on to the science news okay. for this week. So quite a lot has happened in science this week. I'm not sure how much you guys have looked at the news. I should probably do a news quiz one of these days. That would be a good idea. Anyway. Um, so the major thing that I'm sure you probably will have seen if you haven't had your head in the sand this week is that the International Space Station had a little bit of a crisis this week. Not sure if anybody saw that. Um, for the first time ever, the International Space Station actually, um, ri uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Sustained. Sustained some damage, um, that was actually vital to the, oh, holding of the station so if you haven't seen it the cabin actually began to depressurize on wednesday night and this was later found to be due to a two millimeter hole in one of the soyuz craft that is permanently docked to the station um, that's a lot of damage <laughs> that's a lot of damage <laughs> unfortunately oh, they didn't have board. flex tape on bo on board and <laughs> so if you look at the articles um it it's going to go down as the kind of finger thing because the first thing the astronauts did when they found it was just put a finger on the hole as oh, most normal hilarious. people would do just basically <laughs> plugged it with a finger until someone found the cellar tape <laughs> no why, why? So basically like a fish tank situation mm -hmm. but it has been taped up and the cabin pressure has been secured so just a couple of facts about it it wasn't the Soyuz craft is two millimeters wide, so not that big. Um, but even so, that two millimeter hole would have depressurized the entire place in only eighteen days. So, so basically, if they hadn't have found it, which obviously they did, but if they weren't checking the instruments right and whatever, it would have been eighteen days before all of the air was gone. So probably only about five or six days before it was so depressurized that they all suffocated. But even a leak like that working so quickly it's still categorized as just a, a minor leak it's, it's nothing too major like oh it's just a little error which i think is just such a fitting thing of how dangerous space travel is because it's just like oh yeah death in six days just a minor thing anyway just grab the yeah, tape it'll be yeah. fine Get that flex tape. Bring it with some everywhere. Some flex tape on. on to so, a discovery from this week. The uh, for more water being found in our solar system, um, Jupiter's big red spot has been found to have the chemical signature of water in it this week. So is that a euphemism? Nice. <laughs> what big red spot? It's the it's the actual <laughs> scientific term for the great storm on Jupiter. It's referred to as the big red spot. Maybe that's just a UK thing. I don't know. But yeah, the uh, the almost eternal storm on Jupiter contains water. Who knew? More water. Amazing. This week is the 39th anniversary of the Pioneer spacecraft reaching Saturn. So uh, Pioneer was the first craft to reach Saturn. And it's been 39 years. Uh, since we got some close-up pictures of Saturn and its moons. So that will be quite an interesting anniversary next year, 40 years of seeing Saturn. Um, we don't have our Saturn voice actor in here yet because he didn't wake up, but I was hoping he'd have something to say. He doesn't? Okay, that's fine, because he's asleep. <laughs> um, <laughs> Should have stayed up like I did. Uh, yeah, don't stay up 20 hours for the podcast. Not worth it. Just never know Australia. Please like you. look after yourselves. Stay hydrated. Get a glass of water. I hope everyone has water with them. I have water. Okay. I did not have time to oh, grab a glass of water. Sad. Go get water off the podcast. I'll remind you. Last you piece of news this week. Okay. Um, to segue into the next topic is the fact that this week NASA administrators have announced that they have successfully budgeted returning to the moon in the next 10 years, which is... 
great. Yeah, so, yeah, Returning yeah, to the yeah, Moon yeah. is on the cards within the next 10 years. Um, they said they planned it into the budget um, and it will work as long as they get the required cooperation with the European Space Agency and some of the private companies that they have already entered in contract with and that their first plan is to build a space station like the International Space Station that actually orbits the moon like wow sci-fi like Ooh. oh that really excites Ooh. me so much and oh. actually that if all goes to schedule like they have a schedule and they're just like yeah we have this <laughs> the first part of that the first element of this space station to orbit the moon is scheduled to be launched in 2022 so hopefully by 2030 it will have been launched <laughs> <laughs> you wow. know how space deadlines work but yeah it's yeah. on the cards return <laughs> to the moon fuck yeah oh wait i swore um, <laughs> did you swim jar <laughs> <laughs> okay no returning to the moon really excites me anyway that's cool yeah, i feel like that that was justified you're good thank you uh, anyway that is a in, uh, twitch chat says hey that's actually useful news of course here at soul studios we specialize in only providing the most useful relevant and important <laughs> news to our viewers hmm. press x but, hey out. that's just a few <laughs> well i mean all right let's move on yeah we we'll, we will move on because the last bit of news was a handy segue into our character this week i guess you Ooh. can probably guess who the character is because of our new voice actor and also that piece of news. It is, of course, Luna Chan or the Moon. So, on to that. If you are not familiar with pictures of the Moon, you can click on the Twitch stream right now. I'm pretty sure everyone knows what the Moon looks like, considering it's probably the easiest of the characters to see, other than the actual ground. <laughs> What's up in the sky? It's what a big old right rock. Now? So, obviously the moon or as we are calling her in the show to distinguish from the moons of all of the different planets luna chan is in real world in the real world um earth's only natural satellite and is just a beautiful sight to behold so who did i ask to look at the formation theories to start off with yo sup sup fam okay all right, so the moon was formed 4.51 billion years ago, or some 60 million years after the origin of the solar space system. Uh, um, there's several formation mechanisms that are proposed as to how the moon became where it is, including fission of the moon from Earth's crust through centrifugal force, or the gravitational capture of the preformed moon, the co formation of the Earth and moon together. Or, as some people known as moon truthers would like to call it, the moon does not exist in all the entire hoax. Shiro, how do you feel about not existing? <laughs> she doesn't exist, she can't answer. <laughs> cool. Good answer for something that doesn't exist. <laughs> Discovering something that doesn't exist. Okay. Okay, let's let's not get copyright strike. Um, Pecan, do you want to talk us through then the next stage sort of of history as formation was first, and then in chronological order, the next thing is kind of like ancient history and mythology. So, do you want to talk us through that? Uh, yep. So, uh, according to the mm, Maya mythology, Maya. Uh, Maya. Maya. Really, that's how the Maya is spelled. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like English. <laughs> Fair enough. English is not my first language. <laughs> so apparently the sun and the moon were terrestrial creatures. The moon was female. The, the sun was male. They fell in love. Heretic. They ran away. <laughs> and then the moon's grandfather got mad at her and had her killed. And oh, then dragonflies no. collected her body and blood and put them in 13 hollow stumps. The oh, sun God. went looking for those 13 stumps. And 12 of them gave life to harmful insects and snakes. <laughs> and then the last one, she was in and she was reborn to the end. How do you feel about that, Shiro? <laughs> Are you telling me I'm a baby again? <laughs> sure, why not? You are an adolescent child. 
Do you have any more mythology, or is that one it? Ah, uh, that was the main thing, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's fine. Good old, good old classic mythology. <laughs> classic mythology. Mm -hmm. Killing mythology. everyone. So, we did have Pons here to do the standard physical data, but he dropped out, so Rabbit was kind enough to do the honours about ten minutes ago. The, kick. Yep. the quick ten second Google search. Off the air? Yeah, pretty much. Uh, well, pretty much the moon uh, orbits around the Earth in approximately 27 days. Of course, from the Earth it appears 29 days because we're going around the sun at the same time. Um, it goes an average of about one kilometer a second, so that's uh, that's pretty speedy. Um, gotta go moderately. Gotta go moderately quick. Yeah. Um, it, uh, generally goes between about three hundred and sixty-two thousand kilometers to four hundred five thousand kilometers from the Earth, uh, which means it's actually a pretty long distance that uh, the astronauts traveled. To, that's actually the furthest away anybody has been from the Earth. Period. Um, oh. I'm not far out, am I? Because I know my internet's here. Nope, and you're fine. Right? Okay, cool. Um, generally, its uh, its inclination is about five degrees to the ecliptic, which means that it doesn't cover the sun exactly every single orbit, which is why eclipses are kind of rare here. Wow. Yeah. That's cool. Interesting. And talking about eclipses, obviously, I'm pretty sure most of you had the chance to see the one last year, considering most of you are American. Or yep. at least partially. Yep. And I don't partially, know. Partially, yeah. I don't partially. know if I said before, zero percent but American. I literally dragged my family across the continent to watch it. Oh. <laughs> and was it, was it? It was. I cried. I, I cried like a baby. <laughs> <laughs> it was like it was like went into totality. I just started sobbing. Honestly, it was just ridiculous. Um, um, eclipses. I'm definitely Look at the beautiful shadow. Uh, I love the moon though. If you can tell by how excited I got about people going back to it. So, um, yeah, the eclipse is a definitely special event. And if you want to go see the next one in Antarctica with me, hit me up. <laughs> Yes, we'll do it as a team. <laughs> team meet up in Antarctica. I want to go. Okay, I'm. Yeah, I lo eclipses. If you have the chance, like, don't think, oh, it's just some astronomical event. Because seriously, it, it's such an amazing. They're very feeling. rare and they're very yeah. cool. They are so cool. Isn't there another one that's traveling through the U.S. or did that one already happen? Yeah, there's there's one in a, a couple more years in the U.S. again. So yeah, twenty twenty four. It's uh, gonna go through like Indianapolis. Yeah, just come to America when that happens, or then you don't have to worry about getting cold in the Antarctic. No, I'm going to the Antarctic. No, I probably won't. <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> I want to. Imagine seeing an eclipse in the snow. How cool! Like what? Just uh, that's like my two favorite things: eclipses and snow. Anyway, that is quite off topic. So let's. Um... Yeah, eclipses. Um, move on wow. to the lunar landings and the Apollo missions and stuff, which have been briefly touched on, but CASA has done the research. Quote unquote research. So, yeah, I've <laughs> compiled a little list of what I think would be more important lunar landings. So, starting off with the good old Lunar 2 from the Soviet Union's lunar program, it landed on the moon on the September 13th, 1959. It was the first spacecraft to reach the surface of the moon and the first man-made object to land on another celestial body. Next up, we got Luna 9. It was an unmanned space mission with the Soviet Union's lunar program. On February 3rd, 1966, the Luna 9 spacecraft became the first spacecraft to achieve a soft landing on the moon. And obviously, we, next, we have the Apollo 11, the most important. Are you laughing at me? You what? Uh, I think I know. No. Oh, you the, know? The, way, <laughs> the way you said soft landing, because obviously the first one crashed, but I just imagine. <laughs> soft landing. 
cool, isn't it? Well, I, I mean, if, imagine... if, it landed, if it landed slow enough not to be completely obliterated... <laughs> Fine, I'll change it. <laughs> I know, I'll change I it. It's became... The whole thing just crashing onto the server. No, the I became... I'll, I'll change it. It became the first spacecraft like, to achieve a sensual landing on the moon. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Yeah, that's literally when 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 obviously Luna 2 crashed but like I, I was imagining Luna 9 landing and like giving the moon a hug and it's like that bit from Hitchhikers when the ground when the whale's like I wonder if the ground will be friends with me excuse me <laughs> and then the soft landing's like a proper hug anyway sorry I I'm moving on <laughs> we have the most probably the most important in the Apollo 11 obviously which was the first space flight that landed the first two people on the moon, Mission Commander Neil Armstrong and Pilot Buzz Aldrin, both American. And it landed on July 20th, 1969. Next is Apollo 15, is a night's man mission in the United States Apollo program, the fourth to land on the moon and the eighth successful manned mission. But this one was the first mission that had the lunar roving vol- vehicle. Next, we got this, just the Apollo 17, which was the final mission in NASA's Apollo program, which launched on December 7th, 1972. Next up, I wanted to briefly brush on the, the Exploration Mission 2, which is scheduled to launch on 2023, which of the Space Launch System and possibly the first crewed mission of NASA's Orion spacecraft. That's all I got. That's all I got in my notepad. That's plenty. Thank oh, you. Back if you actually took me. Yeah, nice. Um, yeah, I like that you did mention the lunar craft as well because obviously, in a statistical terms, if you're going based on like best of five, the Russians won the space race. <laughs> Soft landing. <laughs> They 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 got they got into space first. They got something in like a living thing into space first. They got a man safely into space and back first. They got to the moon first. They got to the moon and it didn't crash first. <laughs> yeah, team soft the, Ameri- first. The, the Americans basically did the equivalent of drifting in a Formula One race in second right until the last moment and then doing a <laughs> sneaky overtake. Yeah, pretty much. And it was the sneakiest, badassiest. Overtake but hey, <laughs> there, there was an American. Anyway, I I think no matter what now, we can all look back and be like, yeah, the space race probably helped us get where we are today with computers and stuff. So despite the fact that uh-huh. politics are going bad again, we should all probably be proud as a human race that we decided to channel our anger then into science rather than blowing each other up. So yeah. maybe we can do that again now. Anyway. Battle of the Wits. I mean, if we're going off that, then five out of five of the challenges were completed by humans. Ooh. That's even better. Units. Yeah. Mm. Boom. Boom. Like, Detroit I prefer intellectual Battle of the Wits. That's right. (laughs) That's right. Penguins can't get to the moon, can you? (laughs) Don't talk about the penguins. No, No below. I'm talking to a Project Penguin executioner. I oh, I am lost, but we will certainly move That's on. No way it's an Australian that is all of the facts that we have researched it's for not, you. It's a Sydney thing. Shut up. What is going on? <laughs> no, you. What? <laughs> Australians, please. <laughs> yes, anyway, moving on to the next topic. <laughs> Uh, the next Jeff topic says, is oh. the standard character analysis com, if you'd like to take us away. Ooh, it's my turn. <laughs> yeah, sure. You know, it's a long way. Take us to the moon. Stay away, guys. <laughs> yes. <laughs> We're looking at you, not even watching. That is a very important thing to remember is that Luna Chan is the resident Molly of the series. <laughs> She is literally in elementary school, guys. She is actually in elementary school. So looting I'm is not allowed no- to stay anywhere near her. <laughs> no, there are, there are multiple <laughs> team members who have to be within at least 10 feet of me. <laughs> and absolutely no wood glue within a 50-foot radius. <laughs> Don't dis- yeah, That's, that's no going to be a big no. <laughs> um, wood glue goes to my... Anyways, so Luna Chan, 
uh, in the show is Earth Chan's younger sister, who lives in the same house, but goes to an elementary school instead of the main high school. She has short gray hair that's divided between a light and a dark side, split down the middle. Which is displayed on the screen right now. Yes. Um, Personality-wise, she is mainly very, very quiet. She doesn't talk much. She tends to sort of hang around and cling to her older sister when they're together. She's naturally kind of curious and... Like, that's mostly what we have. She's not fully super developed. She's just a curious and quiet little kid that likes hanging around her sister and playing around sometimes. Um, Luna does like to hang around Earth when Earth is tending to her garden, and she tries to help uh, water the plants and stuff like that, but sometimes does tend to spill on the plants and knock them over because she is a non-habitable planet. <laughs> Well, not a planet, non-habitable celestial object. I like the idea of her knocking over the watering cans as well, considering like she controls the tides on Earth, so having yeah, like control so of the what, water and stuff. Water bender. <laughs> 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 it would sorry, it would be sorry, quite, we just watched Avatar. It would be quite yeah, cute if there was course. there was a little scene of like Luna walking into Earth's greenhouse and all the water cans just fall over when they see her coming. <laughs> that would be pretty cute. And she's like, I just want to help. Yeah. But. It's really help. Oh yeah, one last thing uh, that I forgot before is that she also, in addition to just doing the random things and being curious, she likes sweets and watching kids anime and tends to get kind of into watching kids anime. But now She'll yeah. jump up and sing along with the people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're, basically, we're going to make her so cute that you will be screaming. Have you ever, yeah. seen, the, have you the... ever seen the I Hate Sunday scene from Engage to the Unidentified? You know what we mean. All, all of the cute tropes. Luna is all of the cute tropes. Although, she she does have some like aspects of the moon as well, like hanging around Earth, obviously, because I mean, the, moon, the moon orbits The moon Earth. was supposed to be a dog until recently. <laughs> and also the I fact... Because change that. Because, well, because of loyalty, but I think also because, obviously, the moon faces the Earth most of the time to have her not only be like a sibling but like an adoring sibling is quite cute so yeah um obviously you've probably heard the various squeaks from our lovely voice actor and you can see just how cute <laughs> <laughs> just how cute luna will be hey shiro welcome what a squeak hi um, if you haven't already seen Shiro's YouTube channel, you should definitely check it out because you can hear more of her voice and even her moon audition to hear how Nina Chan is going to be without putting her on the spot here. But I would like to ask you some questions if that's okay. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> that's so cute. Pardon, I can't pardon, take pardon her. <laughs> I don't want to put you under pressure. You're too adorable. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Get the, uh, the soft um, for while me, we're talking, I'm just going to put some concept art up of Luna so you can see like where the different parts came from, as we've done from all characters. Again, these these are on the final art. They are just kind of the concept as we have it right now. So these are concepts. We got the other a, ones semi final. We got a lovely artist fifty one to do them. Yeah, and Kata. So the, the two pieces up on screen right now are 51 on the left and Kata on the right. Oh, um, hi. Oh, hi. <laughs> anyway, Shiro. Oh, hi, Mark. You're awkward. Yes. Um, currently, as it stands, what are your favourite aspects of Luna Chan's character, like physical or characteristic-wise? I really like her poncho, physically speaking, but character-wise, mm -mm. I like how she's clingy to her sister. Cute. But I also like how she watches anime. And I also <laughs> like how she eats sweets. I just like her. <laughs> Don't forget that we had a how? big debate on what what kind of animal the poncho should be. Yeah, that was, a, that yeah. was one of the biggest debate. It had to be floppy bunny ears. It was, it was, it was the biggest Team Rao since Uranus's hair debate. 
<laughs> yeah. Ever since yeah. ponytail versus no ponytail. <laughs> <laughs> that debate still rages on today. So just... Ever okay. since Mercury trap or not trap, that's a is trap. No. 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 <laughs> Let's not no. get into this. Not even a debate anymore. Let's let Luna take the stage. Um, Shiro, how similar do you think you are to your character? Um, I like anime. I like sweet. <laughs> I don't have a sister though. I mean, so I don't. I don't know I, how to relate to that part, but I'll be your sister. Like it's fine. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> I love you too. I nominate myself for that position. Uh, no, thank you. <laughs> You're adorable. Um, is there anything you don't like about Luna Chan's character, or, or that you didn't like when we were putting it together? Um, the really tight knot of poncho poncho. As That's in the great. one, the one that Kata has on the screen. That... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, was to, I like messaged him like, Kata, I, that's not what I mean. Uh, I thought... I kept showing him like uh, pictures, like references. In my mind, I was like, thinking yeah. Poncho, but I, I was actually thinking Raincoat. What? I can show you pictures? But even... Wait, oh, this, so this you... isn't even like a... This isn't like a... This is an old, old photo. Put, put one that's more recent, please. No. That was the one I got. <laughs> Tough luck. <laughs> Put it so, in a bad light too. You were thinking more like outdoorsy kind of raincoat rather than cutesy raincoat. Because like a proper raincoat for walking would be quite tight to the skin. But then you've made it kind of tight to the skin and only halfway. That is kind of strange. <laughs> <laughs> right? I'm like, this doesn't work. Congratulations, Kat. <laughs> anyway, um, I will put the normal art back up because um 51's done a lovely kind of breakdown of the poncho so you can see how it ended up being and obviously she is a little bunny rabbit from the kind of some of the mythology i think she there's like something to do with the bunny and the moon i think it's yep. that you you can see yeah. a bunny on the moon surface and stuff we were having an argument basically the the poncho argument boiled down to bear or rabbit and the only argument for bear was basically Desmond the moon bear. Yes. <laughs> How did I get here? The end. The end. And then the rabbit had like law and everything. So we ended up going with the rabbit. <laughs> but I love the fact that on this team, one single internet meme is enough to rival thousands of years of mythology. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, We're professional. The, are ba- the entire show is based off of freaking. I know. So, of course, it's going to be. <laughs> well, I will um, never forget that meeting where I was like, "What is the thing for bear? Like, why do people want bear?" And almost the entire chat went, "There's the moon bear." Yeah, we also. <laughs> <laughs> and I completely, I completely missed it up until that point. Anyway. The indecision for that was like. So much that we ended up doing like a Twitter poll on it just to see um, like what people wanted. It was like, yo guys, do you want a rabbit or do you want a bear? Take your pick now. And everybody voted for rabbit. <laughs> yeah, get out of here, look. <laughs> <laughs> Oof. Oh, I just realized we do have a bear and a rabbit on the team. <laughs> yeah. Man, I wonder which who, who which part one Doomsday Rabbit voted for. <laughs> Our vault and trying to the update videos. That's actually true. Yeah. Hmm. Um, returning back hmm. to Shiro's little interview, though, before we sidetrack too much. Um, Shiro, what kind of things do you do to get yourself into character when you're like, or what did you do for your audition and stuff? What are you thinking about? I um, I like re- read read the character sheet. Relatable. Uh, good, good, good start. Uh, good start. She doesn't have voice lines yet. <laughs> I, I bombard someone that knows what's up. I like kept asking calm like, like for details, like what he intended her to kind of be like. Yeah. Other than that, oh, I also related her to other characters, kind of, so that I had. Examples-ish? Yeah. 
but for getting into character, I don't, I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know yet. That's fair enough. Um, because Luna wasn't on the cast for episode one, so we weren't really planning on having a Luna Chan voice actor yet until Link like randomly dragged one. <laughs> In and we were like, oh, okay, we should probably make a character then. <laughs> oh, okay, sure. <laughs> yeah, Thanks, actually, Link. You were useful for one. Do do you tell that story, <laughs> Shiro, of how you got here? Um. Um. Uh, Let's have a dramatic I, 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 re I, 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 re random. re Uh. <laughs> Let's have a dramatic I, I, retelling. I, I, Go. I can't. I can't. Um. Oh, okay, so one day, right? One day, I was like. <laughs> I was like, you know, you know what, you know what? If I'm gonna, if I'm gonna get hate on the internet, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get hate on the internet. I don't care. And then so I like shared one of my videos uh, yo, yo. on on red on Reddit, and then what? and then I I don't even know how Reddit works without it ever post. And then Radical. and then Link messages me, and at first I actually thought it was like um yeah. like like a mod that was telling me like you're not allowed to post this. <laughs> That's no good. <laughs> and then and then I read it and then it was like Link being like, Hey, you should do this thing. Have you heard of this thing? Do Have it. you done this? Come Have you heard about Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? And it's funny because he's like, Hey, I think your voice suits the moon and the video I posted was like Earth and Pluto, but <laughs> Anyway, you didn't know at this point that the moon was the only one without a voice actor. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that too. That, but that's like, why she's really quiet because we didn't have a voice actor until now. Yeah, and then yeah, I don't know. I just talked for a while on Reddit, and then he sent me the Discord link, which I was really thankful for because if you guys communicate on any other social media, I'd feel too weird to join. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Sends a text out of nowhere. Right. Well, like, you know, we have a Facebook wow. group, and I'm like, oh, I don't like those. <laughs> yeah, social media, follow us on Twitter, please. And then, and then, I don't know, I joined, and then I don't think I saw Link at first on the Discord. I, I think so I, I was agreed like, to do, because I, I remember yeah, you, yeah, me. I remember you saying, like, I came to be the moon voice actor, and I was like, we weren't advertising for moon hacks or what? And I kind of like went through everything. <laughs> this because this was like Com wasn't awake time, and sometimes things happen and nobody tells me. But yeah. I'm like, we have a moon character. I'm I'm going into my and I was like, no, we decided we weren't gonna look for a Lena Town voice actor yet because they're not in episode one. And I was like going through all of her, and I was like, what do I tell this person? Because they just arrived, and then Link came on. and was like, yeah, she's gonna be our moon voice actor, and I was like, <laughs> Link. God damn it, Link. <laughs> Yell at me for that one, but I didn't I yell at you. Does. I sent you a calm DM saying, you know, we weren't really actively looking for one. And then calm came in like, yeah, sure, she's the moon bag sack. And I was like, okay, then. Boy, <laughs> you Great. just gotta roll with it sometime. <laughs> Excuse me, what the? Like a coin. <laughs> but the thing is, calm can make decisions like that. I can't. I just have to panic and use the leg legislation he's given me. So. <laughs> <laughs> So basically, Link fucked up and did good at the same time. Uh, you, there was no fucking up. That was an intentional. It, it was. It was. It was good, but you did give me a slight panic attack when I was like, "Oh no, someone's interested." <laughs> oh, no. ah. anyway. Well, I didn't yeah. want to assist you just yeah, yet. General basis. I mean, if I haven't given someone a panic attack in the month, I'm doing. Yeah, you're the one I who just, banned one of I our team members. I just wasn't prepared. We'd gone through like a couple of months of accepting people that wanted to audition. I had like gotten all of those lines about how to audition just out of my brain, so I was just not ready. It's just like. Luigi <laughs> 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 voice line flashback. Oof. Oh my god. Yeah, you're not required to do those anymore. <laughs> no, I think you should. But be, if you just want so to do them, then accurate. go ahead. Yeah. No. That's probably not the best idea. Anyway, thank you for that, Shiro. And I hope you enjoy the rest of the podcast as well. And if you haven't already spoken to Shiro on the server, she's often around and she's really cute. And she also reminds people to hydrate and drink water. So she's definitely... It'll give you a good nickname that ends with bean. Yeah, that's... Yeah. yeah. She's definitely wholesome. Bean. One of the most wholesome members. So if you're having a bad day, I'm sure she's got plenty of hugs for you. I'll pat you. Pet <laughs> pats. Head pats. That is head, head pats all around. Yes, feel free to laugh, guys. That's a fair you know. But please do it in bot. 
<laughs> yeah, please don't spam no. Jenna. <laughs> I think you know, when it's wholesome, it's okay. Spamming. Anyway, we can move on now to the pictures I was accidentally showing you earlier because oh. for <laughs> globe trotting <laughs> for globe trotting this week, I want to talk about a place I went to only last weekend and so all of these pictures up on the church screen now are my own photography which i think is cool so it's not yeah, mean it's to brag or anything it's just like it was actually easier yeah. to take pictures myself than look them up online and so i went on a road trip <laughs> so some nice dome if you are not familiar which you won't be because no one else lives in the uk these are pictures of the what is called the eden project so it's a charity organization a non-profit which decided to take a chalk a clay valley it's a clay valley yeah in cornwall in england so basically a big mine dow area where they found clay that they could use to make pots and was totally unusable and most people have said say with quarries and stuff like that like nothing will happen to them they're areas that we've kind of ruined through industry and that will be that and some people decided that actually they would start a project to prove that not only is the world worth protecting but that we can save areas that are already damaged that um things can be refurbished effectively things can be fixed and that we can fix them in a sustainable way that would mean we could transform our entire landscape. So that's kind of the point of the Eden Project, to show that, like, nothing is too far gone now if we work now and we work together. And so their main ethoses are for the earth and together, which I think is definitely something that we can incorporate into the project. So um, if you go around today, the transformation is evident but um if you went around when the project began in 1999 it was literally just a hole in the ground which they have now transformed and put plants on almost every surface and every wall and created these big greenhouse biomes which you can see that definitely characterize the place so they are domes made of glass and steel inspired by nature so um, they're made up of hexagons obviously the strongest shape in nature found by bees and they are bees. greenhouses so they um, are quite warm they have one which is currently a rainforest biome and one which is a Mediterranean biome and then they also have the outside area which is obviously the UK biome so they have um, conservation of lots of different plants and stuff um, kind of trying to save their own little bit of the environment um the outside gardens with have over 3700 different types of plants in it and each biome has well over 5000 species in it wow. they also have um e each biome has not only plants but also different species of bird and insect and um so they basically just little snippets of safety that people is completely just instead of being government led it's people led they have some of my favorite things about it was walking around they have posters up on the wall about not only the project but about things that you can take home and do which i think you've probably seen i've been trying to do in the podcast and actually my favorite poster was walking into the entrance to one of the biomes was just a big thing on the wall that said like there are more things we share in common with everything on the earth than anything that can that should be able to divide us like and then there was one other in the rainforest biome said we share more things than things there are to choose from to divide us so a lot of their ethos is about the fact that it's not actually that difficult to transform everything and to live sustainably but we kind of have to learn to work together first so um there's they what they want to do is leave their project as an example to show how easy it is because um they were able to raise the money and do it as a non-profit and it's kind of an example to the government to say we could do this everywhere it's not too difficult all you need is nature and a little bit of love so um 
it was a very interesting visit. Um, it's almost, it was both really picturesque and kind of like just gorgeous because they've done some really nice landscaping and there's plants everywhere. And just being surrounded by plants and nature always makes me calm. And there's like bees and stuff, but also very thought provoking because there's a lot of things about um, the how everyday things are affecting it and how little conservation we are doing and um reminders kind of everywhere of little bits like even going around seeing people chucking rubbish in a place like that because obviously it is open to the public it just makes you think really how little little some people care and how that means like the rest of us have to do something anyway if you get the chance to go they have a stage area where they hold concerts, they have an annual pie-eating contest, they have beer festivals, they have all sorts of things, because they really want it to be a community space. And they, you can actually do university degrees there and things like eco-diversity and plant biology and botany. Not that I really need to advertise that to most of you, because everyone's at the wrong age, but it is a thing. Like, they do do quite a lot of research. And this summer when I went they've had a exhibition on about going to space so um about sustainable space travel and sustainable life on other planets and how we can use the climate on other planets and what it has become to help predict what will happen to the earth and to kind of prevent it so one of the pictures scrolling through probably looks a little bit out of place and you realize that is actually in the exhibition currently so they have a mock kind of biome the same as what they have on a, on theirs with a screen around the outside instead which is meant to represent a biome a greenhouse on mars and the, one of the things they had going was a like you you went in and it was like a fake rocket trip to mars kind of thing <laughs> and it was like it was done as like a tourism thing so it was like a space airport and oh the next flight to mars leaves in three minutes please have your passports ready kind of thing it was really funny and you'd like go through and we went via the moon and like did like a moon fly by walking around and then went into one of these mars greenhouses and they were displaying the dust storms and all the different environment things that we could like take things like to deal with our own, our own hurricanes from but it was just kind of how that they were they were demonstrating how their ethos and their kind of buildings that they demonstrated would still work on mars because they have things things one of the most precious resources on mars would be water that would need to be recycled but um a lot of the technology that would need to be used for that they already employ in most of the greenhouses because any condensation that forms on the top is like run down and recycled they use rainwater to flush the toilets and things like that so they already have employed quite a lot of it so they were just demonstrating how like a sustainable future doesn't have to be just here and we don't have to stop the science we just need to change how we think about it so overall yeah it was a really eye-opening experience and i really 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 enjoyed it and yeah well oh, it sounds like a really fantastic place nice um yeah. if anybody wants to talk about it more or i have a guidebook and i have quite a lot of leaflets from the project so if anybody's interested in seeing pictures of those or anything like that or any of their um work on conserving culture and things like that because amongst the species they have like, they had some totem poles and they had some like west australian um art on the floor and things like that like trying to retain all of this togetherness and showing how kind of it's the plants and the species that can show that our cultures aren't different because if things can grow in one place and can grow in another then like we can all eat the same food i don't know i kind of phrase that badly but if anybody wants to talk more about it i'm happy to so just find me on the server and i can find you some more pictures but it is easily findable online so please do look it up and i hope that um in the future if we need to petition any governments or anything we can use them as an example so yeah um thanks for listening to me rant for a little bit um it looks really cool
Yeah, it is really cool. Mm-hmm. It's it's honestly gorgeous. Um, one thing I didn't get to do, um, but would definitely like to go again and do is on in the rainforest biome, which has the tallest greenhouse. They have a sky high walk type thing where you can just you can go all the way up to the top of the greenhouse and have like a bird's eye view down over it. And it's a it's about I think it's about eighty ninety meters up into the sky. Ooh. And hmm. and it the but I couldn't go up it because it was too hot at the time. But obviously because it's a greenhouse and the humidity goes up, it was seventy percent humidity and thirty six degrees up there, and outside temperature was fourteen. <laughs> <laughs> so in I I don't know what that is in American. Sorry, but pretty warm. It it <laughs> it was it was pretty hot up there um oh you can see it in that picture there you can see the um stairs going up um but it was it was like just and they barely have to put any heating into it they just use the natural kind of insulation of the shape um i yeah. see a pentagon there you said it was made out of all hexagons you lied to us <laughs> It is. It is made of hexagons. Oh, there is. Oh, there is one pentagon there, isn't it? A few shapes in there. Yeah, to make it bubble shaped. And that um, the the building that kind of looks like the Sydney Opera House is the stage where they hold like music festivals and things. Internet. Yeah, Sydney. Is it Sydney Opera House? Yeah, it's yeah. Sydney Opera. Okay, I I thought I'd just like completely mucked that up then. And that, that's the outdoor garden. <laughs> I just picked the wrong Australian oh, yeah. city. Anyway. Um, oh, actually, it's in Melbourne. <laughs> <laughs> I should probably stop chatting about that now. Because it's time to hear more of your lovely voices. So. Yes. Um, so. I, we, we have about 10 minutes left. So I'm not sure if we will get through everybody's thing. But I wanted to ask. If anybody wanted to talk about a memorable moment working on the project that hasn't been talked about this week or recently, because I definitely have some favourite moments I don't think that have been mentioned. So if anyone can have one that quickly comes to mind or anything. I just don't know what's been mentioned and what has Yeah, I was about to say. Yeah, you put us on the spot here. Yeah. That, that's I true. I can prepare memes. I had a well, time. I think uh, great was gone. everyone... Was everyone here last week that hasn't done an origin story? No, I wasn't here. Oh, if origin you want, to, if you want to share your origin mm. story, then that works. I Ooh, just boy. have origin lost track one. of who's been on and who hasn't. <laughs> oh, all right, get ready for this because it's a pretty good meme in this one. Great. And so, <laughs> so Lost Pause makes a video on the Earth Chan meme, linking the the Reddit, and I'm and I go check it out, and that same day there's this post by this guy named Liji. Oh, oh my god. He's, he's making he's actually making an anime of this. Hmm. Now I'm I didn't really know how Discord worked, but I knew that it like told pe- it told everyone when someone joined. So I thought well, what would happen is the second I would join the server, I would just be hounded, where's hi, welcome to the server. Let's get your audition. So I was like actually terrified to even hit the join server button. And I like paced around my room for like an hour, just before I even clicked the button. <laughs> then I clicked it, no, nothing happened, that was nice. <laughs> <laughs> and then, so I no, waited, no, sent to the audition when the auditions were ready. And then, uh, about a week or so later, I get a message from Liji, he's like, hey, uh, some guy couldn't, some guy had mic trouble, so he had to drop out. You get it, you're in. And I'm like, yay, second place, but in. I'm in. And then, a week later, here's where the meme starts. A week later, Liji kicks me out, the, kicks me out of the project oh. for, like five, for like five hours. What? <laughs> Sends me a message saying, you're off the team, we actually don't really need you. And then five hours later, he deletes that message, sends me another one saying, hey, if you saw that message from earlier, ignore it, it's void now. And then, okay. here's the best part. He forgets to give me the team rollback. And then he leaves to contemplate his life for a weekend. He comes back on Monday and then says he's going to leave and still hasn't given me the team roll back. Oof. Wait a minute. Ouch. So I'm just sitting there like, 
Oh, please I'm not. I, I, I need to be on the team. <laughs> yes, Cass. <laughs> so then I have. So then I'm. So then, then I'm like, well, I guess I gotta contact this new guy who's in charge. And Tom, if you thought you were terrified for this first team meeting, you do not know how terrified I was to send you that first message saying, "Hey, I'm on the team. I just happen to not have the team role." Luckily, he did not delete like my info from the meet the team little thing in the Discord server. So I was like, I could at least use that to tell him, "Hey, I'm I really am on the team. Here's proof." But luckily, Calm believed me right yeah. away, and I'm on the team now. No, I was like, yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, just, you yeah, we need a voice yeah. actor. You go back. And before he left, it was so sad. I didn't get to say goodbye. <laughs> Oof. Wow. All that is. So you were kicked off the team for five hours. That's... <laughs> yep. <laughs> and then he that forgot to get me back before he left. Uh. Damn. Yes. Oh, yeah, and also, one more thing. I was like, all right, I either get onto this team... Or I go to do the spring musical. Luckily, I got onto this team. <laughs> it's a spring <laughs> musical. Spring <laughs> time for Hitler or what? 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 <laughs> what? What? The musical. The, the musical was Oklahoma. Okay. Oh, well, that's better than springtime for Hitler. <laughs> We're talking about all the stories. I can tell mine. Oh, yeah. I don't think I've told mine either. Oh, boy. Cats. <laughs> yeah. Mine's, uh... Beautiful story of me and Luigi. <laughs> so yeah, pretty much I was on the now dead um, Earth Chan universe server. If anyone remembers, oh, I remember rest, that. Rest, rest in, in peace. peace. So I just see uh, some dude post something about a a Reddit post from good old Luigi somewhere, and I was like, "Yeah, I do art, sure." So I joined this server. I talked for about two days. Luigi says he's accepting artists, so, and he says to DM him images we make. And I was in time at the a timeline at the time, and my laptop died, so I just sent him random pictures of my sketchbook, which just ho so happened to include Nazi Chan and Soviet Chan. <laughs> and he was like, "Yeah, sure, these are good enough. <laughs> you're you're on the team, but I want you to do the audition first just so I can test it out. So I, I was like, but my laptop died, so what am I supposed to do? So I had to get my mom, to get to use my mom's laptop to do the audition. So that's how I became what I think was, I think, I'm, I, think I was the first team artist, I'm not sure. I'm like 45% sure. And then Probably. I was here for a while, and then Lee Jean left. I, I was Grand Beam. That's the, that's the best part. Before team, I was Grand Meme, and when Luigi left, he took it with him. <laughs> Bring it back, guys. He Bring got it rid back. of Grand. He got rid of Grand Meme was gone far before. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Come. We should sort of bring it reset. back. No, we're not bringing it back. We're not giving mod giving mod privileges to random server members was not a good idea. <laughs> Bring it back. It was an administrative nightmare. <laughs> we had more more permissions than mod. I know. I know. I was a mod. <laughs> <laughs> it was chaos. Unlimited. Oh, more power. Um, I guess I can do my origin story. If no one to Mine's weird. Yeah. Go for it. Go for it. All right. So. I actually originally found out about the project through r slash DDLC, because at the time, I think I found out about this in like February, March-ish. So I had joined way after, but I found a post, it was like an Earth Chain crossover, and I was like, hey, this seems interesting. And so I looked into it, and I was like, hey, this seems promising, and then I saw that there was a server for an anime, I was like, hey, this seems interesting, so I joined it. And then I just was kind of there for a while. And then they just they announced at one point, they're like, yo, we're opening up mod apps. And I was like, good. I might as well. I have nothing better to do with my life. Um, so I applied, and then somehow I got in. And That's where it all went downhill. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. He, like, just deleted everything. <laughs> yes. Uh, that, did, that didn't happen until a few days later. Like, I had, <laughs> I had to learn how to delete before I could truly master it. 
<laughs> you you know, in the first few days of you being mauled, there's always that one mistake of trying to I delete went... one segment of a command, but actually yeah. deleting the whole yeah, command. Before one. before we put like new mods onto the server, um, and I was like, we should probably update the rules that Luigi left for the mod, and we were like, yeah, we should get around to that, and then no one did, and then you joined, and then within three days, I was like, why didn't I make rules? Why didn't I make a bot guide? I should have made a guide. I should have made a guide. And you know, I wrote one. But then you became a competent enough mod that I never actually posted it. But I... Competent enough. Are you sure but, about that? But, <laughs> but hmm. if we ever get mods like mods again, I have like a comprehensive list of how to be a mod, what to do in each situation, and what the mod rules are, and what you should be careful of, and when you should contact an admin and everything else. Yeah, we probably will bring a few more mods on at some point. Yeah, Please when, make me mod. When we go for the PV slash episode one, because we will be anticipating a lot more people to join the server, so it would be wise. But yeah. Hashtag Keto for mod. I did, yeah, no. I did make a bot guide, though, so you should read the bot guide. I did read the bot guide. It's Good. Really nice. I spent ages oh, on that. I, I, am, I will admit, one of my most valuable contributions to the team outside of, I guess, becoming social media manager, because that happened. That's a, another story. I was just, I think that got brought up at some point. I was like, yo, I can do this. And, um, but I think one of the most valuable contributions I made was helping to forcefully instate Dino. <laughs> <laughs> I just got so fed up with people messing with the stuff. I was like, you know what, Com, can I do this? Dash, I was welcome. like, yeah, sure. Sounds like a good idea. <laughs> And so thus Dino was born. That was definitely one of my flower is fed up, flower is doing this, no one is stopping me kind of project. I am still slightly mad that you took off the cheese command because that was. <laughs> well, I'm mad that we don't oh, have yeah, daddy Because I was anymore. testing. Okay, the this, this, uh, this last story before we end the podcast. I couldn't get the like salute emoji to go at the end of the welcome command. At this point, I didn't understand how you got bots to understand the custom emojis because now I know custom emojis have like a really long string of numbers that identifies them you have to include. I didn't know this at this point. So I was like, why isn't the emoji working? Does it work for non-custom ones? And the first non-custom emoji that came to my head was cheese. So I made a custom <laughs> command on Dino that you did exclamation mark cheese and it posted a cheese emoji. And it worked fine. And so I deleted it instantly. But Link was like, why did you delete the cheese? Maybe I should bring back the cheese. Bring it back. You Please back do. It you know, you can patch cheese. Dino. If you mess up the thing and do, instead of doing dash pat, do exclamation mark pat, Dino will thank you for the pat and tell it that it's trying, tell you that it's trying its but hardest. I'm going to try that out now. <laughs> Wait, yeah, I think I'm going to go and try this soon. Do it in bot. Yeah. Wow. If you, if you, oh. that was a good boy. Thank you for the pat. I aim to please. And that I wrote myself. It doesn't do that automatically. That's awesome. So, yeah, I might play with Dino a little bit more if I... No, I won't, because I have to learn to be an animator. Anyway, thank you very much for watching this week. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope we haven't rambled too long or anything else. I'd like to leave you from with a note from the Eden Project to sign off with, as usual. And that is, try not to throw things away, because there is no such thing as a way. It's just somewhere else on Earth. And so if you can make use of it, then you should, because there's no such thing as a way, which I think is an interesting way to think about it. Anyway. Yeah, jokes on you, I launch all my trash into space. <laughs> <laughs> but even that is just polluting space for when we then want to travel into it. But yeah, don't think, don't throw things as a way. There's no such place as a way. Thank you all for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, we won't be back next week because we are now on an alternate schedule. Alternate. Alternate. You can do this. We're on a bi-weekly schedule. On a <laughs> bi-weekly. Good, we good work. We, we are now on a bi-weekly schedule with the podcast. So the there was a video one week and a podcast the next week. So we won't be back next week, but we will be back the week after. And hopefully an American-friendly time. So sorry, Australians, but um, you uh, can play it back. And yeah, have a good we week. Have an Go get a glass of water. And remember, Earth Chans, not Earth flat. Chans, not okay. Bye. Bye.